may mga agad sa atong tanan. Uh, buksan nato na atong mga Biblia sa Exodus chapter 34. Tamda nato sa atong ng mga mata. Uh, yari dali ang pulong sa ginoo ng atong pag-hangpon kaya pala pamatian sa ningada. Magandang mong kita sa ginoo sa makadali. Lord, gina nagapalapit kami sa imo, nagkilala sa amon nga pagkakulabo sa ikibalo ang imo nga pulong ginoo is uh, eternal ang imo nga pulong ginoo. Halin sa imo, pag nagapray kami Lord sa mga humble hearts to receive what you will tell us this morning. Ang muna akong pangamuyo sa ngalan ni Jesus. Amen. Ang uh, tigulo sa mensahe sa Sininga Aga is the renewal of the covenant. Ang pag-renew sa kasugtanan. Ito na nai i-review sa makadali. Kaga, I, I would want to encourage everyone. Now, every time na nagpamati kita sa pulong sa gino, and this is the desire of the church, is that we do not take the passage and let it speak for what we want to say, for what we want it to say. We want to let it speak for what it says. Kaga kabay pa ang amo ining aton matalupangdan. So sa sininga aga, when we talk about ang pag-renew sa kasugtanan, nga ara sa chapter 34, aton balikan ang mga tiyon kung sa diin ang ining kasugtanan mismo sa sininga libro, gin mention. If you're taking down notes, Write the chapters. No, they are important. Hindi ko na maabrihan and read for you. If you go to chapter two, sa sininga libro, aton ma talupangdan sa later part. I think twenty three or twenty four. Makit an dirak ni mo no nga ang pag 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 bati sa ginoo sa sitwasyon sa slavery sa Egypt is connected. sa pagdundong sa ginoo sa iyang nga kasugtanan o kung sa covenant nga ginimo niya, hindi pa sa kay Moses, kundi sa kay Abraham. So, I have heard, kag nakita kong inyong nga sitwasyon, kag nadundoman ako, ang ako nga ginimo nga kasugtanan sa inyong mga amay pa. So, the Lord has committed Himself sa pagpadayon sa kung ano ang ginhambal niya sa kay Abraham sa iyang kasugtanan nga pirmahan sa iyang adugo. No? You can read that in Genesis chapter 15. Ang ining nga kasugtanan man, ina dito kay Abraham pa lang, no? gin-follow up ni siya, kag nag-expand siya, kag nagpadayon, kag gin... What should I say? May mga terms nga gin-dugang. Kag amunin siya ang covenant na makita na to in the book of Exodus. Just briefly, in chapter six, amu man ang iyang ginhambal, no? Na ako ang Dios na nagimo sa covenant sa inyo ng mga amay. That's Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Ganik ko ang taka mo from the land of slavery tungod sa ako niya covenant. Sa nagwa na sila, naglambot sila sa Mount Sinai at naghambal ang ginoo sa ila. I made a covenant. You are a treasured possession. A chosen nation, a holy nation, chosen people. Chapter 19. Sang ginambal sa ilang covenant, kung baga daw makasiling kita ang kasugtanan, ginbasa pa lang. In chapter 19, atong mabasahan, nga sila mismo naghambal, yes, kung ano man na siya, ang tanangi ang bal sa ginoo, amon pagatumanon. Nagsulod ang Ten Commandments, nagsulod ang mga additional commandments, ang mga specifics sa Ten Commandments. Kag naglambot kita sa chapter 24, kag dito sa chapter 24, we can say, although lain nga uh, pamaagi, ginpirmahan ang kasugtanan, ang covenant. Now, this is very important for us to see. God made a covenant with Abraham. God moved this covenant towards His people Israel here sa Exodus. Paglambot mo sa chapter 19, The reading of the covenant, kagam mga tao na siling yes. In chapter 24 is the signing of the covenant. This is the blood of the covenant. Do you see the picture? Why is that necessary? Nga a important din esya para maichindihan natin na agin renew ang covenant. Because last week nakit anaton that the covenant 
was a broken man. I, God, no? I will do this to you, to hold the covenant na sa inyong mga amay. This is the covenant I'm making with you. Chapter 19, you said yes. Chapter 24, nagpirmahan. Nakikita, no? There was an offering. Kimuon ninyo. Nagsaka si Moses, 40 days and 40 nights. When he came down, the covenant was broken. Literal na broken because the tablets of stone were broken. And so, ari kita subong, this is the second to the last sermon in the book of Exodus, and the covenant is renewed. Gin renew ang covenant kag aton makit andre that the initiative sa covenant sa kasubtanan wala nagahalin sa tawo nagahalin git sa ginoo. So, sininga aga, I will share three things sa inyo about the renewal of the covenant. Unagit ang renewal sa covenant, number one, is an act of God's disclosure. Act ni siya, himo ni siya, kung sa diin gina-disclose sa ginoo ang iya kaugalingon. This is a gracious thing for God to do. Because kung hindi pang i-disclose sa ginoo ang iya kaugalingon, tanan kita magkakabuhi sa kadudulman. If God shuts himself out by himself, God who made the light, ara kita tanan sa kadudulman. It's a gracious thing na ang Diyos mismo nag-disclose ang iya kaugalingon. So ang pag-renew sa covenant is an act of disclosure of God. Ikadua, ang renewal sa covenant is a means by which God will do wonders or marvels. Mabasahan nyo na, no? Kanina nabasahan natin. Verse 10. Behold, I am making a covenant and before all people, I will do marvels. Ang pag-renew sa covenant is pamaagi sa ginoo kung sa diin magahimu siya sa iya mga wonders and miracles. Nakita na doon ang parting of the Red Sea, but this is more than the parting of the Red Sea. Tangi katatlo, the renewal of the covenant is a way by which we see the glory of God. Ang pag-renew sa covenant pamaagi ini nga makit anaton ang himaya sa ginoo. Magabalik kita sa unang nga punto, an act of God's disclosure. Kung may Bible kamo, balikan na nakon ang chapter 33. Kung sa diin ang ginoo nag-disclose sang iyak og ginoo. By the way, in the book of Exodus, God has been disclosing himself. Kadang iya nga tinutuyo para makilalaan natin siya, para kung makilalaan natin siya, makilalaan natin ng atong kaugalingon kag makahibalo kita kung anong atong paghahimuon. Ang problema sa atong baliskad, anong atong niya himuon, kahit tungkol na muna yung atong niya himuon, dapat ang Diyos mangina muna. So, binalungit natin ang ginoo para sa atong. In Exodus, that's not the case. This is who God is, this is who you are, and this is what you are supposed to do because of who God is. God started by saying, I am, Exodus chapter 3. God started saying, I am the God of the covenant, chapter 6. Chapter 7, nagambal siya, before the plagues, so that you will know, amunin nga akong paghahimuon, chapter 7. Chapter 9, nagambal ang ginoo, Pharaoh, abi mo, ikaw na ang sovereign. I will do this para makilala ni mo kung sino ang Diyos sa mga Israelites. And when we go to chapter 15, they sang a song saying, Who is like the Lord? Kag amuni siya ang Diyos, amuni siya kadako. And through the process, makita na to, no? That God is revealing Himself. Here, in the renewal of the covenant, paano bin reveal sa ginoo iya kaugalingon? Nagsiling siya sa kay Moses. Siling ni Moses, no? Kun, my, if I have found favor in your sight, chapter 33, verse 17. Kag nagambal ka, I know you by name. Siling ni Moses, show me your glory. 
Lord, pakita ako sa inyo mga himaya. Ano sa sa ginoo? It's good to see the verse. Ano sa sa ginoo? I will let my goodness pass. Not glory. Lord, I want to see your glory. Tabo na ka? I will let my goodness pass. Now, why not glory? Because the glory of God is in His goodness. And the goodness of God is His glory. In the glory of God is His goodness. So that when we see the glory of God, we see His goodness. Ang Himaya sa Ginoo inekara sa iya. So nagsiling siya sa kay Moses. I will let my goodness pass. Mismo ang ginawa ng hambal, no? I will proclaim my name. Kagano siling niya. I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious. I will show mercy to whom I will show mercy. I think may ibang dala sa inyo, mga nagapong po, ano naman po, unfair. Every time you start with yourself, it will always be unfair. Basta magsugod sa imong kaugalingon, it will always be unfair. Kung isa ay sa hong takamudisubong, you can say it's unfair. But when it starts with God, it is never unfair. It is because kung nakita ni mo kung sino ang ginoo, makita ni mo ni mo kaugalingon, and when God says He is gracious, He is not being unfair. Dari na to makita niya ang grasya sa ginoo mga kauturan, hindi ni siya budigyan nga abrihan na to, and everyone come in! Sunod ka mo, papa, kamukha na nang inyong gusto. God's grace is sovereign grace. It is given to whom He will give it. Sovereign grace. Nakita niyong balance. Eh, kabudlay is actually strike ang balance. No? Sa iyang na pagkadako, gracious ang ginoo. Pero sa iyang na pagkagracious, hindi mo siya magbutong na himoon mo siya sinubuo. His grace is sovereign. That's chapter 33. Ang muling disclosures ang ginawa, siya mismo nagahambal na hanungod sa iya kaugalingon. Naging tago niya si Moses. Now we go to chapter 34. Ginabala niya si Moses, tungod na buka ang tablets of stone, cut for yourself two tablets, tapos in the morning, saka ka, and I will do this. Kung basahan ninyo, pagkagina na sa ato niya kipasa, you can go back to chapter 19, the magit animo that mas stricto ang nakasulat din. Wala sang may makapalapit. Sa chapter 24, may actually may ara. Sa chapter 19, may kurit. Pero din, let no one be seen throughout all the mountain. No flocks or earth's grace opposite that mountain. Mas stricto siya. No? Tapos yung tawag niya si Moses. To himself. Up in the mountain, to the cloud. The Lord descended in the cloud, verse 5, and stood with him there and proclaimed the name of the Lord. Amon siya mga verses na nagpatremble. No? Kung may tindihan, magtremble ka gano. Mauyo ka gano. The Lord passed before him and proclaimed, though pariha sa chapter 33. Anong proclamation si Gino? Listen carefully. The Lord, the Lord. Nga kinanglanong gitsulito. Do you see that? Nga lang pa lang mo. The Lord. The Lord. Bisan dira ka pa lang, matremble ka na. No? And here is Moses before him and God himself proclaims, The Lord. The Lord. Anong sopo niya? A God merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness, keeping steadfast love for thousands or thousand up to thousand generations. It could be translated like that. Forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin. Ano ang context to, sinin? Bago lang kita nagaling sa chapters 32 and 33. Kung sa diin ang gino naghambal sa ila, I am the God who brought you out from the land of Egypt. And God's people, naghimo sa golden cup, ano nung yun ginambal? These are your gods who brought you out from the land of Egypt. And we will make a festival to the Lord. Bago lang yun. And here comes the Lord proclaiming Himself before Moses. 
the Lord, the Lord, a God gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Ano ang significance na? Tanawa niyo kung ano ang forgive yan. Forgiving, iniquity, transgression, and sin. All these three things. Magsilin ka iniquity, ang wickedness, ang imo mo ginahin mo. And what they did was a wicked thing. Wickedness ang imo ginahin mo. What is transgression? transgression, inang may kurit dili, tapos ginlabayan mo ang kurit. Walang mo ginrespeto ang kurit. Nung no, gincross mo siya. Trespassing is transgression. Nag-transgress sila, nag sila sa wicked act. They can't help you. They are stiff-necked people. Because sin is that innate rebellion to the ways of God. Ano ang ginimok sa ginawa? Gracious and merciful. Abounding in steadfast love. Ang ginoo maluluyon, ang ginoo nag-abound in steadfast love. At muli doon kung, kung basa ako mo siya, do, do garitan, dant na siya, no? Abounding in, di siya mahugsan. Steadfast because nagapatayo ni siya. And you have to see this in the entire scripture for what this means. Anong po silingon silinga steadfast love? This is a love that binds itself in the covenant. This is not love that is fickle. This is not love nga parehas lang sa nanamian ka and then after that bayaan mo siya kaya hindi ka nanamian. This is love that commits itself to the object that he loves. And this is God's steadfast love. Do you remember last week? Siling niya kay Moses, I will destroy them, but I will make them into a nation. But God continued in His steadfast love. This is a bounding, steadfast love. Malipatangin lang ang tanahan. Pagpunin niyo ka lang. Go back to these verses. Memorize them. Because the meaning of verses, ang pag-proclaim si Gino sa iyak o galingon, appeared also in many parts of the Bible. But before I go to that, hindi ko nipag-iikot doon. Sila niya, forgiving iniquity, transgression, and sin, but who will by no means clear the guilty? Kag, atun makitaan, no? Gra- grabe, ang, grabe ang pictures yung ginawa doon, no? He is the God, gracious, merciful, compassionate, abounding in steadfast love, forgiving iniquity, transgression, and sin, but by no means clear the guilty. Sa pagkamatuod, sa iyang atatay, sa iyang kanakan, sa kanakan, sa iyang mga kanakan, up to the third and fourth generation. The Lord does not clear the guilty. <coughs> Ang judgment nagatupak gid sa guilty nakit ani nyo ang natabok sa nagiligad nga si Mano nakit ani nyo kung paano sa nagibo sa golden cup nakit ani nyo kung paano nagintercede si Moses nakit an bala ninyo that judgment still fell and there were those who died and they were judged and they were killed by the levites ang judgment nagatupak Karun makit ang tanyang fullness sa sininga story, ano? That the Lord is not saying, because I forgive you, everything's fine. Okay, everything's fine. I think nakuha ko ni kay Tim Keller, no? Every time there is forgiveness, every time there is forgiveness, not the right word, there's always someone who pays the cost. Always. Always. Wala asang forgiveness, no wala asang cost. For example, uh, just very shortly, may pinigo ka, nagulang sa imo sa phone, nadula yan imo mga phone. Ginalain ka. Now, it's either bayaran niya or masiling ka, okay lang kay friend na tayo, hindi na lang pagbayari. But kung magsiling ka, hindi na lang pagbayari, who pays the cost? You pay the cost. Because you lost the phone. 
if, if the friend says, hey, you live by rent lang, bakla na ka pag book. The friend pays the cost. Someone pays the cost. Hindi pwede nga wala lang. Okay, a friend na nag-yapon, no? Nothing happened to the phone. No! Something happened to the phone and someone pays the cost. And when God says, He will by in no way clear the guilty, hindi na po maglamot sa pundan. I will tell you that that is the same thing that Jesus did on the cross. That the forgiveness that He bought for you and for me was not that Nagpanakaw si Jesus sa resin siya. Okay! Free na kamutanan! Why na kamutanan sa lahat? I forgive you! Jesus has to come and die so that the guilt and sin, iniquity, transgression are all punished. Because forgiveness comes with the cost. Wala na kang balagino. Okay lang golden cup. Okay lang kung mag-worship na. Hindi na kang mag-iwat ka. May matampukin. Mga kauturan, ang ining na confession, this is, a, this is an Old Testament confession, appeared. Ining Maya chapter 9. Ining Maya chapter 9, ang context niya is confession. Nag-confess sila sa ilang mga sala, and when they confess their sins, si Ining Maya, quote niya ining a verse. In, in fact, hindi lang ang verse, no? Gimbalik niya sa history. Diri sa natabo, diri in making the golden cup, kaya naghambal siya sa ginoo, Lord, forgive! Because you are the God who is gracious, compassionate, slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love. Ang basis lang yun sa imong nga forgiveness is these verses. Ang unang yun ni ang basis. Magkato ka sa Joel chapter 2, I think verse 13, or you can read other verses after verse 13. Ang ginoo magadalas ang judgment kag nagsiling si, through the prophet Joel. Lord, repent ka muna, not in sackcloth and ashes, but repent and turn to the Lord for His steadfast love endures forever. He is the God who is slow to anger, abounding in love. I think this was also quoted two times in the, in the book of Psalms. Ang basis sang forgiveness sang ino amuni ang pagdisclose niya sa niya at obeling mo niya. No wonder si Moses nag siling sang indisclose sa ginoong iya at obeling mo niya. Moses bowed down his head toward the earth and worship. Kaya ganun siling ni Moses, if I have found favor in your sight, please let the Lord go in the midst of us for it is a stiff-necked people and pardon our iniquity and our sin and take us for your inheritance. Nag-struggle ka sa, sa lahat? Nag-struggle ka? Magbalik sa ginoon? This is the confession. This is the confession that is the basis. Lord, forgive me. Many times ang ato nang ginagimo is we do better things. Nakasalakot eh. I will do better things to pay for our sins. This is the basis, the renewal of the covenant as God discloses Himself. Hindi kumalipat. If you were attending Sunday school, or for those who have gone through the book of Jonah, this verse, these verses were quoted. Did you again quote? Jonah chapter 4. You go to Jonah chapter 4. It's quite shocking. Because ang ining of verse, so far sa ako naging share sa inyo, no? Sang in humble sa gitoo sa kay Moses. The Lord, the Lord, a God who is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Up to thousands of generations, forgiving their, their iniquity, their transgression, and their sin. Grabe ang grasya sa gitoo. Pagamunin ang basis, magpaliwit na sa inyo. Pagamunin ang basis, by the way, kung naa ang mga Ninevites ginse sa inyo. Pagi sa iyang agrasya, kag no wonder si Jonah nagreklamo. Nagreklamo si Jonah, we go to Jonah chapter 4, nagreklamo si Jonah, kay nga ang nag-forgive sa inyo. Siling ko ikaw, i-forgive it sa inyo. Anong gulit? Gusto ko siya tani. 
gusto ko sila tani mawasak gusto ko sila tani hukman gusto ko sila tani matunaw sa kalayo gusto ko sila tani amo ni matabo sa ila and that is exactly what will happen when you take these verses and say tani applied sa akon tani hindi lang apply sa iba no paghukom lang sa ila grabe ang istorya sa mga verses no bear this in mind Exodus 34, 6-7 Ang inuog yung disclose niya niya masal Pag naghambal siya, siya ang Diyos na manluyon Siya ang Diyos na sa iyang agrasya Sa pag-abound sa iyang agugma na walak sa limit Siya nagapatawad sa iyong mga iniquity Sa iyong mga wickedness Sa iyong mga pag-cross ang linya Sa iyong mga transgression And in fact, even sa iyong mga innate rebellion Which is sin. No wonder Moses says, pardon our iniquity. Ikaduwa, ang pag-renew sa covenant is a means by which God will do wonders. Mabasahan na natin sa verse 10. Naghamba lang gino, Behold, I am making a covenant before all people. I will do marvels or wonders such as have not been created in all the earth or in any nation. And all the people among whom you are shall see the work of the Lord, for it is an awesome thing that I will do with you. I wonder if ikakuning a verse, and then amulin ipakita ko sa inyo, and then I'll ask you, ano yan na after sa God says, I will make a covenant and I will do wonders, and then nakita niyo ang Bible reference, no? Exodus. Ah, siguro may himo only what ang ginugong uh, Red Sea. No, something like that. No, no grabe ka. Uh, as in grabe, you know, he will do wonders. It's quite shocking na after the gamba lang, you know, oh, I will do wonders! Gani. Observe the law. Basahan nyo ba? Basahan nyo? I will do great wonders among you. I will do great wonders with you. In fact, hindi grabe nga wonders, no? As if ginaha-proclaim niya that it will multiply and so on and so forth. And then after verse 10, nagambal siya, observe what I command you this day. Sa pagkamatuod lang, you can read this in chapter 23, verse 32. You can also go to chapter 23, halin sa verse 14. Ang inisi lang ang mga commandments, Amumalit sila kaya kung commandments, except sa mga specific commandments na ginambal from 20, 21, and 22. Ang ining ang mga commandments, parihas gin. Ano ang significance nga ang naghambal ang gino? The renewal of the covenant, amuni siyang pamaagi kung sa diin ang gino will do great wonders among these people. And then naghambal siya, this is your part of the covenant. By the way, basi malipatan natin, basta kasultanan ka eh. Hindi pwede na ang kasultanan isa lang ka-party. Okay? May mukubla covenant. May ano gid, no? May ibang gid. May terms ang covenant. So, ang ginuo na gambal amuni ang terms sa inyo ang covenant. Observe what I command you this day. Inisya, uh, uh, isa -isa ko lang. Uh, just some of them. Take care, lest you make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land to which you go, lest it become a snare in your midst. Tear down their altars and break their pillars and cut down their asherim. Kaya no matabo? For you shall worship no other god. For the Lord whose name is Jealous is a jealous God. This is not the first time in Exodus. You can go back to chapter 20. You shall not make any carved image. The name, the Lord whose name is Jealous is a jealous God. Maglambot na kamo into the land of promise. Break down their altars. Do not make any other gods. Because kung sa diin, kung sila himuon ni nilang ang mga festival, sa ilang ang mga katawan, you are whoring. 
Oh, but guys, na-translate sa ito, no? Like, ito pala, why mga si Paul? Kaya i-translate kung uh, hiligay noon, no? Nga naga, uh, unfaithful ikaw. Nga naga pangita ka sa ibang na Diyos, Diyos. By the way, just for for everybody's sake, in the Bible, idolatry is always adultery. Uh, adultery na siya, in a sense na, there is God, there is one God we are supposed to worship, and having other gods is actually having relationships among other gods. So it's it's adultery, a, a, idolatry, which is adultery. So Selena, don't do that for the name of God who is jealous. He's a jealous God. Example. Sino na sa inyo din nakatilaw selos? Or subong nagaselos? Subong git? Usually, Ang selos-selos ni mas dako ni siya na dako ni siya ng issue sa mga lubihan ay magkasawa. Right? Now, para makita niyo yung picture, no? Kung ikaw, may lubya ikaw, nagaselos ka sa isang kalalaki tungod ang iyong mga lubya mahiling mag sa iya. Uh, uh, can you picture it out? I think uh, hindi ko na i-detail pa, no? Ano na yun ang imong feeling sa imong nga jealousy? Na by the way, pwede naman balis ka ron, no? Ang babae, may nubyo, tapos ang imo yung nga nubyo, mahiling mo istorya sa iba ng babae. And then, anong imong feeling? This is very important to get this right. Because God Himself says, His name is Jealous, and He's a Jealous God. Ano ang feeling natin kung nag-jealous kita? Amo niya ang feeling. Nga ah, nga ako nga miga, pero may nag-istorya sa inyong lalaki. Tapos tunuko na ito ng inyong lalaki. Ano ginang abi yan? Ah, guwapo man ko. Na, do, do, do you see the picture? Guwapo man ko, galing ito, hindi ko pa rin yan sa kwartahan sa inyo. Pero, alaman ko. Pero, dama ko na accomplish. Siya galing ito, hindi ito. I know, I'm showing you this picture because this jealousy and every human jealousy and the reason why nagaka jealous ako because there is always a sense of weakness that I feel. So naga jealous ako kaya nga ang nagakanto ka mo sa iban anong pananaw ninyo sa akon? Kag when I look at myself, I feel so small. I feel I am inferior. I feel I have a weakness. Take note. Very important. Kung i-apply ka na sa ginoo, does that apply? Look at the book of Exodus. Just the book of Exodus. Here comes the self-existent, powerful, awesome, majestic, beautiful God who needs nothing. Is He weak? Hindi ma-apply. So when God says He is jealous for you, anong buot si Limon sina? It means that when you whore after other gods, you will put yourself in danger and in pain. Kagang iyang steadfast love, ang iyang jealousy is a jealousy that wants to get you from there so that you will realize nga ang matutuod lang giging nga kalipay ara sa iya. He is jealous not because he is weak. He is jealous not because he lacks something. He is jealous not because he is inferior. But he is jealous because kabalugit ang ginoo nga kung may Diyos ka pa nga iban other than him, you will never be fully satisfied. Are you happy with that jealousy? I am happy that God is jealous for me. If God is not jealous for me, pabayaan niyo lang po. Tidra ka? That's it. Okay na. Pabayaan na ka. No other gods, no other altars, break their altars. Kahit the moment na matabu na sa inyo, they will be, be, become a snare to you. Kag hindi niyo na makita ang matutuod ng kalipat. Mag-reflect kita, anay, mga kautunan. Are you happy that God is jealous for you? He is so jealous because His steadfast love is abounding. Kag tungod palangga ka sa ginuo, 
he will pursue you. When you pursue other gods, ipakita sa ginoo sa imo that those other gods will kill you. Only God can give you real life. Hindi na kita magpalayan, no? What are the sins na nanamian ang tagitimukon? Na doon, hindi na doon masurrender sa ginoo. The Lord, because He is jealous, He will destroy them. The essence of destroying the golden calf. Tumod kung may ibang pangagyos, hindi kamalipan. Nakitaan niyo bala na ang covenant, ang, ang kasuktanan na binimok sa ginoo, burdensome. Siguro kung makita mo siya nga burdensome, hindi mo gita kilala kung ano ang ginoo. Sim mo siya. Ay naanong mo na yan, Lord, man? Tungod na sunod ko sa imo, doon wala na ko yung freedom niya. Doon wala na ko yung sinimukon niya. Ang sunod-sunod na yung sa imo niya. Hindi na nahampan kung sino ang ginoo. Kung nahampan natin kung sino ang ginoo. I thank the Lord that He has made a covenant with me. Pero, wala ko pa na sa bata kamangkot na naghambal ang ginoo. That through this, He will make great wonders. Mga kauturan, after naghambal siya, nagsiling siya, Observe the law. No other gods. Nga ang kabaluang ginoo that they cannot fulfill the law. So anong ginihimo sa ginoo? Jeremiah chapter 31. Jeremiah chapter 31. Amo ni ginihimo sa ginoo? It's a marvel. Jeremiah 31. Nagambal ang ginoo, I will do great wonders, I will do great marvels sa tunga sa ako ng mga katawahan. And then nagambal siya, these are the terms of the covenant. Well, kung sa amon na git, tapat git, no? Jeremiah 31, 31. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. Not Like the covenant that I made with their fathers on the day when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. That's Exodus. My covenant that they broke. That's Exodus. Though I was their husband, declares the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, declares the Lord. I will put my law within them, I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And no longer each one teach his neighbor, each brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they will all know me, from the least to the greatest, for I will forgive, forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. Jeremiah 32, you can read the same thing. You can read from verse 40. Ezekiel chapter 36, it's the same thing. Anong ginambal sa ginoo? Behold, I will make a covenant with you and I will do wonders. Obey this. Pero nakita sa ginoo that we will falter along the way. And so along the way, naghambal ang ginoo through His prophets that this covenant in Egypt is not final. I will make a covenant, din compare nyo to ang covenant here, that instead of writing this on tablets of stone, I will write the laws in your hearts. And I will put my spirit in your hearts. So that you will know, we will know Him. So that we will know the Lord. That the Lord forgives our trespasses and our iniquities and our sin. Amuni siya ang wonder. Ah, binyo, ang greatest ng miracle. Amuto siyang crossing of the Red Sea. There is a crossing from death to life. May himuo ng ginuo. Kag mga marvel kita tanan. Because ang covenant na kasiling, do this and you will live. Pero hindi kita makatuman sa kasubuan, gani mapatay kita tanan. And here is the marvel. There will come a time when I will put my law in your heart. 
in the hearts of flesh. Huwag mo na ang heart ng stone, yung mga kuna siya heart of flesh. When you go to Ezekiel chapter 36, it is that chapter that Nicodemus and Jesus have in mind in John chapter 3. Amo na siya ang gina-refer ni Jesus about the cleansing of water and the spirit moving. Buot si lingon mga kauturan, may limuon ang dinuo which is greater than the physical crossing of the Red Sea. It is the crossing from death to life. Because in deep ikaw nga ginhambalan, obey this and you will live. May limo ni mo ang kasuguan. In deep na itong masarangan. Pero mag-aabot ang tikon nga ang ginuo, ang iyang ahimuon. Instead of giving us the law, He will write the law in our hearts. Sa kung na siya natabo. When Jesus came, He fulfilled the law. So that when you put your faith in Him, God's laws are written in your heart. Do you notice? Do you notice? Nga ang kasuguan, wala nagahatag kabuhi. Ang kasuguan hindi malain, pero wala siya nagahatag kabuhi. It never gives life. Karang tato ang tanang ng 2 Corinthians 3. Never will. Subo magkat kapag siba, may mga kasuguan. Eh. And the more ka nga ginasugo, the more ka nga daw, hindi gusto. Now, do you notice? The more ka nga hindi magsupsup sa imo nga mask, the more ka nga ginabalan niya, mas pasupas sa imo mask. Mask, mask, the more mga da gusto ubahon. No ka ginahambalan ka, no ka ginahambalan ka. But once the heart is changed, nagalain ang tsura sa law. Do you see that? When po nang ginahambal sa mo, ah, hugas, hugas naman, kapila na akong hugas, 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 did you see the difference? Nga ang nagamu ko ni, ah, kay love, kukuling ako ng mga utod. Hindi ko gusto nga, kasi may virus, kung ma-spread sila. Amo ni, galing nga nagamu ko ni. The heart is changed, and when did that, when did God do that? When Jesus came and fulfilled the law, because you cannot fulfill the law. He came and fulfilled the law. And because He fulfilled the law, when you put your faith in Him, He puts His law in your hearts. The Spirit now gives life. Just a small comment. I think you will ask. Last time, sa ginwa ni ko ni, wala ko ni siya na hambal. It's just a shocking law. Verse 26. The best of the first fruits of your ground you shall bring to the house of the Lord your God. You shall not boil a young goat in its mother's milk. Ano po sila ng sinan? It also appeared in chapter 23. I think uh, 2319. Well, many people aren't sure about it. But I don't want to read that just to give you trivia. I want you to understand no, ang essence. Nga nga hindi ko paglutuon, ang bata nga kanding, sa gatas, pabukalan mo sa sa gatas ang iyang ananay. What is supposed to give life should not be the means to death. The milk that is supposed to give life and nourish the young goat must not be the means by which to kill the goat. In short, what gives life must give life. Must give life. I think essentially, may nagahambal no, that there could be sacrifices in the Canaanites na ginahimo ni nila. Maybe true. But kung tanawin mo siya in Exodus, that is very true. What gives life, you do not use what gives life to bring death. Ang gracia sa ginoo that gives life must not be a means for you to bring death. Anong po sinin mo sinin? Because pwede mo ma-misuse ang gracia sa ginoo. Essentially, just my thoughts about that word. The renewal of the covenant is an act of disclosure of God. The renewal of the covenant is a means by which God may do marvels because is lanya no ang atong tagipusuan. And finally, the renewal of the covenant 
is the way by which we see the glory of God. Nakita niyo itong last portion, yung basa ni Manong Selo. Sa nagpanaog si Moses 40 days and 40 nights, no bread, no water. Remember, 40 days and 40 nights, nagpanaog niya, golden cup. Nagsaka sa liwat, 40 days and 40 nights, pagpanaog niya, his face was shining. Wala ko pa na, wala pa ko na experience na either ako na face or face na iba na nag-a-seagal yan. Kag ang pagbasaw ni mong passage, ang mga tao, impulbaan sila. Kag hindi sila magpalapit. Until, ginambalan sila ni Moses na magpalapit kami. And then, mag na si Moses, ang muni, ang kasuguan na ginambal si Ginoo para sa inyo. And after Moses speaks to them, he would cover his face with a veil. Pero kung magsulod siya dito, kag mag sa ginoo, he has to remove that veil. And when he comes out and talks to the people, he has to cover his face with a veil. Ano to siya ang sa nawong ni Moses? It was a glimpse. It was a reflection of the glory of God. He has been talking with God. And so, pagpanaog niya, gin-reflect niya ang himaya sa ginoo. Kag sa matuod niya, makakita sa himaya sa ginoo, wala kita nag-party. But in awe and reverence, grabe kay ginoo niya, kag gamit niya si Moses. But I will close with 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Kung sa diin, ang ininga passage was used by Paul, actually you can go until chapter 4, gin-gamit niya ini, Kag ang context niya is naghambal siya about the ministry of the new covenant. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Maybe we will go there. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Dari kita magatakop. Ang konteksto niya, minister sila sa new covenant. Kag ang iba lang abahe ng akong pagkabasahon. Ang amon niya confidence sa sining na ministry, hindi halin sa amon, eh, halin sa mga naghahambal kung sino kami or mga recommendation letter, hindi amon na, no? Kundi ang sufficiency na amon ara sa ginoo. Ang ginoo ang naghahimo sa amon competent. And then, ginambal, naginambal siya sa chapter 3, verse 7, 2 Corinthians 3. Now, if the ministry of death carved letters on stone came with such glory that the Israelites could not gaze Moses' face because of its glory, which was being brought to an end, will not the ministry of the Spirit have even more glory? For, for if there was glory in the ministry of condemnation, the ministry of righteousness must far exceed it in glory. Indeed, in this case, what once had glory has come to have no glory at all because of the glory that surpasses it. Delegate, ano itong kinambal niya? Si Ling the Apostle Paul, ang natabu sang una was glorious. Nakita nyo naman ang nawong ni Moses. Pero, kung i-compare ni siya nato ng himaya sang una dito sa kay Moses, sa himaya sang ginimo, sang ginungo subong paagi sa kay Jesus, it seems like ang glory sa una, it seems like there's no glory in comparison to the glory of the new covenant. Gani, sila niya, nga nga ginatakpan. Nga nga ginatakpan sa, uh, sa, sa Exodus chapter 34. Ginatakpan siya so that mag siya sa mga tao. Hindi mahaglo ang mga tao. But in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, we know the reason. Pag ang rason niya ay ginatakpan ang guya ni Moses, do you know what? Because the glory is fading. The glory is fading. That's why his face, the, the, the Israelites don't want to see the end to that which is fading. Naga fade ang glory. Pero may himaya, nga wala naga fade. Padayo na nanay na to, no? Siling yan, For if what was being brought to an, to an end came with glory, much more will what is permanent have glory. Since we have hope, we are very bold. Like, unlike Moses, who would put a veil over his face so that the Israelites might not gaze at the outcome of what was being brought to an end. That's the fading glory. But then, my Arab again, no? their minds were hardened for to this day when they read the old covenant, 
the same veil remains unlifted. May veil si Moses, may ginhambal man siya nga tabon sa mga nawong, sa mga tao nga nagapamati, nga amay. Because only through Christ is it taken away. Yes, to this day, whenever Moses is read, a veil lies over their hearts. But when one turns to the Lord, the veil is removed. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we all, with unveiled face, beholding the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes the Lord, who is the Spirit. He explained, you know, sa akun nga ginbasa, sa time ni Moses nga nagatabun siya because the glory was fading. It was glorious, pero kung compare mo siya sa new covenant, in Jesus, this is far more glorious. May mga tao man nga ginatabuna ng ilang anawong. Kung ang pagbasa sa Old Testament, wala nagalambot sa kay Kristo. Because only in Jesus is the veil lifted. And when one turns to the Lord, the veil is lifted. And when the veil is lifted, you will see God's glory. And when you see God's glory, you are transformed. Ang transformation sang kabuhi is connected to beholding the glory of God. And the glory of God is in the face of Jesus Christ. For God who is like said, let light shine out of darkness so that we behold the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians 4, 6. Na, uh, it means, ang panawagan sa atin, we don't just see the narrative ng ala sa Old Testament. We don't just see the narrative ang glory sa natabu sa kay Moses. There is a veil that we cannot see if all we see is Moses. But the veil is taken kung makitaan ni mo nga ang istorya na hanungod sa ginhimo o sa ginoo para sa imo paagi sa kay Jesus. And you will see the glory of the Lord in the face of Jesus Christ. And it is in beholding the glory that our lives are transformed. Nothing else. The law will never transform your life. Never. That is not glorious. Pamati ka mo. Basta ka mo Bible. Pamuyo ka mo. Na, no man yung classic verse 1. Do, kaya ka mo na Christian. Kaya ka mo ka mo sina. It will never change. You will feel guilty. You will feel, ah, takpan ako mati. But when you behold that glory in the face of Jesus Christ. You see the proclamation in 34, 6, and 7, The Lord, the Lord, a God gracious and merciful, slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love, forgiving my iniquity, my transgression, my sin, but in no way clear my guilt, but He paid my guilt on the cross. That's why the Pope says, I can say, Pardon me. And when we behold Jesus, our lives are transformed. You come to church, you hear the law, you will not be transformed. You come to church, you behold Jesus, you will be transformed. Kabay pa, no? Sa ato niya pagpala uli, we will behold Him and we are moved from one glory to another because the veil is removed we don't just see Moses, we see Jesus. Yung disclose niya ang iyang asel, yung pakita niya ang iyang marvels, yung pakita niya ang iyang animal. Kabay pa, hindi kita mabukatan kung magsinungan din ako. I have made a covenant with you. I am jealous for you because He loves you with an everlasting love. Magapangang mag-iwag na. Lord, forgive us for running after other gods. 
kapaminsar kami, kung na muni Lord, nalipay kami di, kung na muni masatisfy kami, kung na muni mas nami ni siya. And we have forsaken you. You have renewed the covenant, but yet, when you tell us the law, all the more ang among your heart, you know, would want to disobey. Grabe ang among your heart, Lord. But you have shown us who Jesus is. He is the full disclosure of God. He is the marvel by which God did His work in our hearts. And Jesus is also the glory of God. So that when we behold Him, nagapatransform mga aming mga katulad. Kabay pa Lord, maintindihan namin kung sin o siya. And we will also be transformed. You will transform us as we behold your Son. In His name we pray. Amen.